From the colonial era, transitioning through independence to the present Fourth Republic, Ghana has consolidated and maintained good performance in its gold production sector. For over a thousand years, gold mining in Ghana evolved and transcended the ancient kingdom of Ghana, the former Gold Coast colony, and to present-day Ghana, producing a substantial portion of the world's gold. Gold has adorned Ghana's cultural heritage and ornaments for decorating kings and queens, mostly from the southern part of Ghana. Currently, gold contributes about 40% of total export receipts. Ghana recorded a 29% increase in gold production last year, enabling it to win back the top spot from South Africa as the continent's largest gold producer for 2022. From 3 million, 643,687 ounces for 2022 and 2.819823 million ounces for 2021, driven by growth in the output of both large and small scale sectors. The production level was just about 2% of the national gold production. It was estimated to be about 60,000 people who were involved all over the country. But that thing, you know, keep on increasing from 1989 up to where we are today. When we have an average of 35% uh, of gold production coming from the small scale mining sector, and it engaged more than 1 million people. And stats have shows that for each of the people operating in the small scale mining sector, you have about four people depending on them. So in all, about 5,000 people are depending on artisanal and small scale mining in this country. The commodity, seen as the driver of development for mining communities, Ghana's artisanal small scale mining sector has taken shape from a low skilled industry to a highly improved, organized, and sophisticated sector, embracing about 4 million workforce and providing income to mining communities that lack alternative livelihoods. The benefit of small scale, we cannot be oblivious to it. You are talking about an activity which some 34 years ago employed just barely 50 to 100,000 people in just about four or five regions, Eastern, Ashanti, Western, Central, now Western North, being undertaken in 13 out of the 16 regions in Ghana. I'm talking about small scale mining for good. It is supporting about 3 million livelihoods. That's about 10% of Ghana's population. And when I use the term livelihoods, I'm not just talking about mere employment. You have people who get up and go to the site and they are working there. They are working in the pit or they go underground. Those are direct, you know, employment. That is just one aspect of a livelihood conundrum. Now, there are women and men who come there, set up, and sell food around the clock. So to the banku seller at that site, that is her source of livelihood. Her livelihood is tied to the miners who are working underground or in that open pit there. As at August this year, you know, that's about eight months, about a billion dollars alone, and, and officially, in receipts from small scale mining. Since the early 80s, transcending the era of the economic recovery program, the artisanal small scale mining industry evolved into a modernized one with a revised mining code, policy reforms, and legislation. After independence, we virtually inherited all the laws from our colonial masters. We also continue in the same way, discouraging our people from doing legalized mining. So they were regarded as illegal miners. As usual, they were arrested, beaten, some of them were imprisoned. This thing went on to some time, and we realized that, you know, because they are not organized, they were still mining, and even selling their product to 
people outside the country in the way they were smuggling our products. So in 1983, during the economic recovery program time, they realized that no, people were mining in Ghana and exporting it to our neighboring countries. Even at a certain point in time, Togo, which was not having even a single operating mine, was exporting gold. A couple of uh, all the economic recovery program being undertaken at the time led to the promulgation of small-scale gold mining law, that is PNDC law 218 in 1989. From 2016 to 2022, Ghana's small-scale gold production totaled about 8.977.181 million ounces, an indication of the subsector's contribution to the economy and national gold output. Despite the huge potential the mining sector offers, some argue that the mining sector in general has not been able to achieve the same pace of economic growth as compared to other rich mineral economies like Australia and even South Africa. Signs of poverty, underdeveloped communities and increase in social vices are the telltale signs of these mining areas in Ghana. Experts argue that the negative effects of mining, especially the loss of fertile agricultural lands, leave residents of mining communities even much poorer in relative terms than they were before. <laughs> The endless arguments of rightful ownership of this mineral resource, coupled with lack of jobs, residents in mining communities felt being shortchanged, and the influx of experts in the industry, to some extent, formed the basis for some people engaging in illegal mining, popularly known as Galamse. The practice has taken a huge toll on gains made in the subsector, culminating in a ban of small-scale mining in 2018. Thereafter, some sanity prevailed, but the reverse is the current state of mining communities. Degraded lands, polluted water bodies, forcing governments to channel a chunk of resources to tackle Galamse menace head-on. Thirty-four years ago, since 1989, when we started small-scale mining lawfully, we, we have taken geological investigations seriously. We've been able to set aside a lot of money for that. We'll not be where we are. But if you ask me what we need to deal with is where we can get, you know, places for the miners to work. That is the problem. So you can imagine 34 years, roughly three decades of inaction. And the serious one is the illegal mining that is going on, especially in unauthorized places, like on the water bodies, forest reserves, and all unauthorized areas. That is one of the biggest challenges that you have. Some Influential people like the chiefs, traditional leaders, uh, opinion leaders, also conniving with foreigners to operate in the areas of jurisdiction. It's also a, a big challenge for us. So mainly those are the challenges we have in the mining sector. Government soon rolled out a series of measures to stem the tide and ensure that Ghana secures the full economic and social benefits that mining development promises in an environmentally and socially responsible manner. We are now putting money in geological investigation. So if you ask me in the next two, three years, you will start seeing the benefits of these monies that we are putting in geological investigation. So some funds have been released in geological uh, survey some have also been released to UMAT, and they are all doing some wonderful work. We've seen some nice results. So over the years now, we can start saying and telling the people of Ghana that, look, now, these are some of the areas that have been explored by geological survey. 
so we can put the miners out there and put them there that is it so the future is bright very bright if we are able to sustain a geological investigation but in the operation itself you need to be a Ghanaian of 18 years and above to operate on the surface mine but because you have two type of uh, operations you either work on the surface or you go underground if you want to operate in underground you need to be 21 years and above because child labor issues are taken very seriously as far as mining is concerned that is why if you see our policy we say child labor is at law in the mining industry both large scale and the small scale the small scale and community mining scheme introduced by governments across mining communities is to bolster host communities in mining, engineer growth and development while addressing the issue of illegal mining. To this end, as part of measures by governments to ensure responsible and sustainable small scale mining, an operational manual was developed by the Minerals Commission in September 2021. The operational manual clarifies what are the acceptable standards for and streamlines small-scale mining of especially gold, which is the country's key mineral and on which the subsector focuses, along with its affiliate community mining scheme in Ghana. In President Ekufuado's submission at the launch of the scheme, quote, we cannot ignore the state of our environment. We are endangering the very survival of this beautiful and blessed land." Unquote. To the president, the dense forest that is home to varied trees, plants and fauna have largely been destroyed by illegal mining. Two years since its introduction, has the scheme enhanced the quality of life for mine workers and host communities? Well, I was a year, I was a year, I a year, I was 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 a Meti me aye de bia hwe me ma ne bie bie wie vas e gusu de bi e bo me bra e bie bie me sports enye ma bebre ama e do ma ba kuro yi mu if it's a first ni ye ejuma e ton ade mpa ye nto e ma no aba kuro mu community na aye se community ejuma na abo am for member me won ma tre onye we we university for the majuma through the majuma ya Staring us in the face is the state of the environment as a result of Galamse. Thus, degraded lands and polluted water bodies, with the phenomenon of children falling into abandoned pits in some mining areas. This is how the young guys who went underground to mine, this is how they entered the shaft and how dangerous it is. This can easily cave in. And so, with the advent of community mining, that gives us permission to be able to do the kind of things that we are doing now. We have avoided some of these things. Now, there is a safe way of entering the shaft, a safe way of operating from the shaft, and then a safe way, a safer way of coming out of the shaft. And so, we have avoided um, the possibility of young guys losing their lives as a result of using routes like this. To, to mine. Going forward, the issue of the wanton distraction with earth moving machines is expected to reduce with the official launch of the Ghana Mine Repository and Tracking Control Room. The Situation Room, developed by the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, 
tracks all earth moving machines in mining concessions used by small scale miners while tracking all tracks carrying explosives. The centre further monitors quarry sites to ascertain the tons of haul each site carries out of the country. So here at the Ghana Mine Constitution Tracking Control, our main job is to track and monitor the movement of uh, excavators in small-scale mining operations. So in this control, it's divided into three sections. The earth moving and mining equipment, the core centre, and the explosive site with the earth moving and mining equipment section. We monitor the excavators, the, the speedboats, the drones, all those things. Beyond this, the Minerals Commission has employed the use of drones in its work to be able to monitor the activities of illegal miners whose activities are outside the reach of the tracking centre. This, if it is fully operationalised, because we are now targeting only the licensed people, because they are the people we know. By the, by the law, we need to even track people who are agents for the distribution of this heavy equipment. So if we track all of them, then we can actually monitor all of them. And we believe that this will be the game changer. Because if all the excavators are tracked, registered and tracked, it means we cannot work in an authorized area. Aside measures such as adequately resourcing regulatory bodies, streamlining the process of license acquisition, applying stiffer sanctions for offenders, generating adequate geoscientific data to promote investment and detailed geological information in designated areas for demarcation to small-scale miners. The addition is to streamline the informal sector and to provide environmentally friendly equipment to ensure responsible gold processing and recovery. As part of the measures to address the challenges that we have, we introduced modern you know, technology, the introduction of mercury-free technology, which is very important because Ghana is a signatory, not only the signatory, but we actually ratified the Minamata Conventions. So we introduced mercury-free technology into the small-scale mining sector. We started with uh, Sikabushia, which is the smelter direct heating, to a stage where we have Gold catcher, which is the processing plant that you process the gold right from the ore stage through the various stages to the smelting stage without the use of mercury. So pollution of mercury is going down, and we believe as we move on, it will come to even zero pollution of mercury in the country. As of June 2023, about 50 gold catcher equipment has been distributed to groups under the Community Mining Scheme and some small-scale miners. The touted higher gold recovery rates machine is mercury-free as government works to eliminate the use of heavy metals such as mercury from gold processing. If you deal with your friend of crasher, any other crasher rocks, no, any stones, no, that the crasher free way anymore, they are called mill name. Mill machine, no, way Green one is here in a poly tank. I know a reserve for insure. And she said, machine here, the bad mill now, yeah, the melia. A baba rotating machine, no. And also, you be rotating a trap black, no. At the abba woolen. And she a free woolen, so na a yed mana, na ya you woolen, no. Here the abba, where a bed and pan. And she way no na. Yeah, the black ni guma. Ye big chat we no. And then ya de rotate good no. And she ye good no ha. Na ye fear good no de go pan we mo anyway. And ti we no machine we no ye hu ya mercury. Ye mfa mercury nye bi biya wa ha biem. Because se community mining o de mercury ye juma em mwa emma in sa seni in chumpon. And ti ye yusu mercury ewa ye jume dia ye di mu biem. And Utina, a bino de way in suppress young fine yet a Jumano Senna Bea, a Jumana Yaya or Gana Hano, if you have a Kosovo call. Until no, a bino de good catcher and a brace, eh? On here, Mercury, 
ewo na asasi bia ye ye mining bia bi Captured in the small scale and community mining manual are acceptable standards to bring to form and structure to the concept to prevent a relapse of the activity into Galamse. Its characteristics are being supervised under a community mining scheme governed by code of practice as stated in regulations 475 and 515 of the minerals and mining regulations. 2012 LI 2182 and also a community-based program. Under the community mining scheme, a person or company is granted a maximum area of 25.2 acres in accordance with Regulations 204 of the Minerals and Mining Licenses Regulations 2012 LI 2176. The scheme is solely reserved for Ghanaians and one must demonstrate the capacity to invest a minimum capital of 100,000 Ghana cities. This amount is subject to review from time to time. While encouraging effective local participation, the small scale and community mining scheme promotes good working conditions of operators while minimizing environmental degradation. Some operators of the scheme are a step ahead, leading the way by collecting dues from members to embark on reclamation exercise gradually in their respective areas. An example is this 60-acre reclaimed land within the community in Siana Abrancia area of the Ashanti region. That time, so you say, the soldiers no, I buy petrol. In Chibu, how no one say, oh, soldiers no say, no, we are moving the machine near the crowd. Why? We in Siba Bia, we are human beings. And then the association of factories, we say, as a science, we are born within a Bia. We are human beings. 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 We are and the IS says every first site be a and every man be a ye would do sir. Ye did ye near Buano, not be a fisher, a hano, that I'm safe on a year, Juma, this time on or Mogana Corno, a bit me a a catahuina. One of the things that we have insisted on doing here is concurrent reclamation so that we don't even wait for you to finish before. As you are digging, you are reclaiming. As you are digging, you are reclaiming. We believe when that is done, our environment will be protected from degradation. And also the water bodies. The law says that you don't have to mine 100 meters away from the water bodies. So we we'll make sure that any water body here, we don't go 100 meters close to it. Having an oversight responsibility, the assembly is ensuring compliance with the law to help effectively fade out illegal mining. I am privileged to inform you that we had three of our communities being launched under this scheme. We have uh, Abrense Mosianso Community Mining Site. We have Yakum Asama Community Mining Site. And we have Pechibanko Community Mining Site. At first, we were finding it difficult fighting illegal mining within our district. It is not every place that the community mining uh, program is covering, but we are doing our best in such a way that we will get a lot of mine, community mining sites within our district. So they should cooperate with us. Not that we have eliminated most of the communities. It's not like that. It is step by step. So we will do all things possible to ensure that most of the communities will be captured under the community mining program so that everybody can do his mining without getting any problem from either the DISEC or any of the security agencies. Operating an underground mine, the Achimfu Community Mining Scheme runs a ship system night and day to efficiently utilize the technology in the discovery and processing of gold as well as increase revenue. The medium-term goal is to expand operations to promote indigenous citizen participation as outlined in the scheme. This is one of the shaking tables and looking at what the workers are doing, the sand is being transferred from this container, from this basin 
to this shaky table. So the sand is being put, it is being scooped from the uh, pans and put over here so that it will be separated. The separation will be done on this table. That is why you see the workers scooping the sand from the uh, saucepans onto the shaky table. Estimating to employ additional thousand uh, indigents when the expansion works are okay, because we are we are planning on expanding the activities up there and expanding this area. For those whose daily production is very high. Their plea is for a bigger processing plant to contain the volumes of ore extracted. RMG Community Mining Scheme alone has a workforce of 5,000 operating three mines, being the Banana, Apinto and Fancy Mines. Here are the excesses of the ore stored at various locations awaiting processing. One could just imagine the revenue to be generated if these were processed immediately after mining. As a company, our motivation is to see that all these young guys, um, very able gentlemen, are having something by way of bread on their table on a daily basis and to support themselves and their families. And we have been able to do that through the community mining scheme. I mean, if you look at what you see here, the load or the all that we call it load in our own language, the all that you, you find here, 60% of what you see here is going to these young guys to take care of themselves and their families. It's only 40% that comes to uh, the company and um, that is what we use to run the entire business operation of um, RMG. The uniqueness of the Dakate small-scale mining company at Ifwanta in the western region is the use of the tributer system, contracting thousands of the youth within the community with an allocated working area to win minerals. They are paid according to the quantity of mineral won. The company, however, complained of the difficulty in the retention of staff and lack of credit facility to bolster production. The amount of gold that we get a month, it is not constant because it depends on the, on the the material that, that they bring out today they can go and then they will get that three pieces or four pieces or they can get it more when you process it uh, it is layer to layer not one uh, layer we are not on the taquine because the reef in taqua is called taquine it doesn't reach there because our strength is very young the, the, the deeper you go the richer you become so if we were able to get money to develop the development and go down and even reach the Taquan, fine. It can give us, it can even last more than uh, 100 years. We're talking to some of the banks. We've met a few and they're prepared to support. We just have to go to some paperwork. So that is one. Two, in instances where the kind of support they need is not that much, we come in. I mean, we, we, also, we can support everybody. So if you take Bongo Strain, for instance, uh, they needed to bring water to the site. The ball who was paid for by Minerals Commission, we paid for it. It's about 20,000 or so in Boho on site. We paid for it. We also gave them money to set up a few things. So those ones, we do come in here right there to help them. But now, uh, there are a few, they themselves are also going out to get sponsors, but it's not that easy. But I think the best way is to have 
the banks to come in now. As, now that they are properly registered as some cooperatives or as a scheme. And we've spoken to a few banks and they are prepared to help support them. Construction of the Lembele Community Mining Center is taking shape with about 60% of the work done and expected to be commissioned soon upon satisfying all requirements in the operational manual. Additional facilities such as gold storerooms would be on site. This whole area is going to be paved all the way to the, the gate. The wall of the facility, that's the wall. So we we'll have a chain link wall fence around it. As we drive in, we have our security post here. So this facility is going to serve as a security post. Now because we have a lot of staff here and they will be working most the, throughout the day, we don't want them to go hungry. So we come in here. If you come in this facility, this is a, a canteen, as a canteen. And this canteen will be managed by another local firm of caterers. Envisaging to employ about 5,000 of the youth, their take is to also develop a lembele with proceeds from the facility and replicate the scheme in adjoining communities. Locality. Sanoma, Anya, Inkrofu, Telugu, Bukazo, Iziama, Asanda. These are the catchment area of the Adamus company. And this is a, it's a mining com community. So the people are used to mining. Some of them all through their life, they are miners. You can't give them any alternative livelihood. So what we are doing here, we are looking at a minimum of a thousand people working here. Now, we intend to replicate it in at least four more locations so that if it's 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, you have 4,000, which is huge. Would you believe that once all of it is working, there won't be any, any, any motivation for people to go and do illegal mine, knowing, knowing that we'll go, and, we'll go after them. Key strategies under the scheme are the adoption of the Small Scale Miners Code of Practice, provision of support services to the community miners, and formation of community mining oversight committees. The Minerals Commission and the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources is looking to expand the small-scale and community mining scheme to every mining community in Ghana. The ultimate is to develop the sector further to enhance the needed growth and development if operators of the community mining scheme act in accordance within the dictates of the law.